Hello and welcome to Policy Bazaar. I'm Arjun Bhagat. Now, term insurance is a fairly simple concept. Uh, when you buy it, you promise to pay a certain amount of money uh, to an insurance company in return for the financial protection of your of your loved ones uh, in the event of your unfortunate death. But uh, how does one determine if the amount of insurance required is adequate? Does um, everyone need it? At what age should one buy it? Uh, how do we calculate it? A lot of questions there. So uh, we've got Yashis Haya to answer them uh, for us, a CEO of Policy Bazaar and also his founder. Welcome to the show, Yashish. Uh, you know, we understand the broad concept of insurance, but, uh, uh, you know, what is the correlation of insurance and age and what is the right amount of insurance to take? See, essentially what you are insuring against is the fact that the person who was earning a particular amount of income or was bringing a particular amount of economic value to the, to the other dependents uh, would not be there and hence their income would not be there. And uh, that is essentially what one is trying to insure against. So if there's an individual who's, let's say, got a one lakh rupee income and they are 35 years old, and one can clearly see they've got a progressive career, which implies that maybe in about seven years' time, this one lakh will go to two lakhs. Essentially, what you're doing is trying to say, if they were not there, what kind of financial quantum would be required? What kind of financial amount would be required to replace that earning stream? all the way from when they are 25, look, this individual is going to keep working till they're about 65. Post 65, they may even have a pension. And so what kind of amount would be required to, to kind of address all of that so that his spouse, his family, his dependents uh, can continue to, you know, live a normal life. So what you're basically saying is you're talking about HLV, which is human life value. So economically, yes. Economically, yeah. yes. So explain that concept for us and how do you actually determine that for a family? Okay, so it, it, it's, uh, it's got to be done uh, not just through a very simple formula, but everybody has to be looked at slightly differently. Uh, let us say it is the primary earning member. The primary earning member's pretty much entire income is required for the household. Uh, that is how the household uh, you know, runs, minus his own, his or her own expenses. So, uh, for example, as we spoke about that particular case, when you're taking the 25-year-old person or 35-year-old person who's earning, let's say, 1 lakh rupees a month, and you can project outwards that in about 7 years' time, they may be earning about 2 lakhs, another 15, 20 years' time, they may be earning about 4 lakhs, and, you know, they will work for the next 25 to 30 years of their life. So, a certain amount of money is, is calculated. Now, you can look at an annual income. The simple way to do it is look, take the annual income and divide it by the current interest rates available. That's, that's one, you know, very rudimentary way of doing it. And, so, and what about inflation then? So then, yeah, so the, your, basically your principal, hopefully, will take care of the inflation part. And, right. uh, you know, you don't earn just the, uh, just the interest on it. So let's say today by investing in any bank deposit, you can earn about 8%. You've got to also project that returns will come down. You can earn about 8%. So if a person has, let's say, 1 lakh rupees a month, and uh, that implies about... 12 lakh rupees a year, and you do it on the gross, you do it on the gross. Uh, you divide it by 8%, you will end up at about 100. So another rule of thumb is about 100 times monthly income, monthly gross income. So about 100 times monthly gross income. Remember, you will get this money tax-free. So that implies there is some about 50% inflation already built into the future. It is, it is a rule of thumb. So uh, typically what you would, what any individual would do is take this at about uh, you know, about 28, 29 when they start having dependents. But in the next 10 years, as their income increases, they probably require another cover because their human life value would have increased. But as they start getting older, when there are only 10 years to go before they retire, they may, they may start looking at mechanisms by which uh, the, the value of the term cover starts coming down. So, you know, they can get out of one of the covers. So that is broadly how you would calculate it. Roughly, monthly income, times 100. However, how do you calculate the human life value from an economic perspective of the spouse? Because if the spouse is not there, uh, while the spouse may not have income, suppose a non-earning spouse, there is still going to be a financial impact on the family. And right. those are impacts that can be, the, again, the broad rule of thumb is about half of the primary earning member's uh, human life value is also the non-earning members' economic human life value. I again say economic because I find the concept of just calling it human life value slightly odd uh, because you know humans are not just valued for their economic value. But yeah, economically, that's the value of the individual, about 50%. So 
whatever the earning member, the primary earning member's salary is, gross salary, multiplied by about 50. And that would be uh, the, the impact of not having the spouse. Now, there are other mechanisms available. So you can look at it from a cost perspective. So you could, you could see it from a perspective of, okay, if the earning is not there, what are the costs of this family going to be? And for how long? And you could essentially... It seems a little complicated though. Isn't it? That's I mean, why. That's why. The how rule does of one thumb. need to look at it? Yeah. So, so the so rule of the rule of thumb is before the age of forty-five, roughly about hundred times monthly income, for the non-earning spouse, fifty times monthly income. After the age of forty-five, it would come down a bit. It will become about eighty times, uh, you know, uh, uh, monthly income, and after the age of fifty, it will become about fifty times family income. Uh, uh, monthly income. So, uh, you know, what about the pointers that we need to keep in mind uh, broadly uh, yeah. when we calculate this? Uh, now, now, calculating human life value and calculating uh, the, the amount of term insurance that you require are two different things. So, human life value basically tells you what is the value or the economic value of this individual over their lifetime. However, uh, you may have liabilities which also need to be taken care of. So, once you've uh, you know, consider the, the, the way you would look at a term cover would be you look at uh, the, the costs that are going to be there as well as the liabilities that are going to be there. So essentially what you would again do is the same thing. Look at the costs, multiply them about 100. That will take care of both the inflation and, you know, the gross costs. Multiply them about 100, 100 to 125. And that should be the amount of term cover you would require plus all the liabilities. The liabilities are home loans any expense that needs to be taken on. Suppose, again, same thing, 35 year old person, their family cost is, let's say, 70,000 rupees. Uh, multiplied by 125, that would take you to roughly about 95 lakhs. It'll come to about the same. However, if they have any home loan, let's say they have a 50 lakh rupee home loan, add that in, that becomes one lakh for, for one crore, 45 lakhs. Suppose they assume that when the children uh, grow up, they would require a certain kind of education. Let us say they require 20 lakhs. They've got two children and they require 20 lakhs each. But there is 10 years to go. So from an, uh, you know, a net present value of that 20 lakhs is, let's say, 10 lakh rupees. So it's two sets of 10 lakh rupees. Hence, the term cover they would require would be about 1 crore 65 lakhs. So essentially, home loan plus any educational or any specific expenses coming out into the family in a period plus regular expenses times 125. Because regular expenses will continue and, uh, you know, adjusted for inflation will be about 125 times. All right. So that's how you determine the amount of term cover that you want or the insurance that you need. What about the uh, payment options? Yes. Uh, because, you know, there are some interesting payment options that have come up as far as uh, or rather payout options uh, yeah. as far as term insurance plans. Yeah. Uh, See, the interesting part about uh, any insurance product is when you get the money back, it is tax free. And uh, so whether you get it in a lump sum or whether you get, whether you get it over a period of time, it is going to be tax free. Now, for the uh, home loan component, so there are, as, I, as I mentioned, there's a home loan component and there's a income component or, the, or a uh, cost component of the family. For the home loan comp component, it makes sense to have a one-time payout. So suppose you got a 50 lakh rupee home loan, it makes sense to have a 50 lakh rupee term cover so that the home loan can be paid off immediately and that liability does not stay on the family. Now imagine if the uh, family's expense is about 70,000 uh, rupees, then having an income uh, based payout mechanism of roughly about 1 lakh rupees is not a bad idea because some of them can go into savings which can be used for future income and if this income continues about 20-30 years, the children's cost can be taken care of etc. So a good balance between a one time and a regular payout is quite helpful. So a one time payout would usually be used for loans or liabilities whereas a regular payout should be used for family expenses. Remember, a regular payout is very important because if you, all of us can get excited about a particular uh, investment opportunity. We, we're not, all of us are not the you know, best financial planners in the world. Look at, our, look at our own lives. Every decision is not meticulously thought through. So we can end up making wrong investment uh, decisions. And hence, from an insurance perspective, which is specifically for you know, people with children who will have expenses as they grow up, it is very important to have an income support so that their education and other expenses can be taken care of and the family unfortunately does not end up spending the money they receive uh, through a lump sum on one big purchase or on one uh, you know, uh, so, so, instrument that so, can make so a So can we talk specifically about some plans which are there as far as deferred payments are concerned? Yeah, you've got two plans out there right now. 
there is a plan from Aviva called Aviva iSecure, which uh, essentially pays out only in a deferred basis. It pays out for the next 15 years. So whatever, uh, suppose you want one lakh rupees for 15 years, you uh, take the, you know, you, you, can, you can take that particular cover. They also have a normal Aviva plan, which kind of pays out in one go. So you can take a combination of that. As I said, for loans, you could take the one-time payout and for the deferred amount, you can take out uh, you know, a deferred pay plan. Uh, you also have a plan from Max Life. Max Life has got three options. You can take uh, you know, a one-time lump sum. You can take a lump sum with a deferred pay plan for about 10 years, or you can take a deferred play, pay plan, which is increasing in value. So every year it goes up by a certain percentage. The payout goes up by a certain percentage for the next 10 years. So those are the two options that exist. A lot of companies are going to be coming out with these options over the next six to 12 months. Almost everybody's applied for a product which has a deferred pay plan because it makes a lot of sense from a consumer point of view. Um, Yashish, you know, we're talking about uh, deferred plans, deferred term plans and payouts thereof. Uh, are they more expensive? Uh, deferred plans are actually lower cost than uh, uh, fixed, uh, you know, lump sum pay plans. And the primary reason is in a lump sum pay plan, you're going to be paid immediately. Whereas in a deferred plan, you're going to be paid over the next 10 years or 15 years. So clearly, uh, there is a certain time value of this money. Now, there is, of course, the security benefit that you will receive this money every month for the next 10 years or 15 years. And that is certainly a benefit and, and security provided to the children. But from a time value perspective, it actually comes out to be cheaper uh, from, from an overall perspective. So both the uh, deferred pay plans are actually amongst the cheapest plans in the market. Right, so let's do a short recap because it is sure. a complicated subject, you know, determining sure. how much insurance one needs and also, you know, correlating it to the human life uh, value. I'll give some very simple uh, pointers here. You've got two approaches. One is the income approach. Second is the expense approach. Let's start with the income approach. If you're below 35, 100 times monthly gross income. If you are between 35 to 50, 80 times monthly gross income. If you are above 50, about 50 times monthly gross income. Now, if you take the expense plan, whatever the family expenses at any age, it does not matter. 125 times uh, the family expense and then add two things. One is any liabilities like loans, etc., that you have and add the net present value, which basically is discount a bit. Uh, every 10 years discounted to half uh, any known expenses which are going to come up specifically around children education so 125 times monthly expenses plus home loan plus whatever expense you think is going to be there for the children as they grow up discounted to half every 10 years so if there's 10 years to the children's education half of what do you think the expenses are going to be Right, Yashish, it's time to take viewers' questions. Uh, we've got uh, Parakram from uh, Assam. He says, the bank has offered me a life insurance cover with the home loan I had applied for. Should I opt for it? I think it'll be much uh, lower cost uh, if uh, you opted in for a pure term insurance cover. Most of uh, such covers offered by banks are higher cost. And also they are decreasing. To See, the bank is interested in having a term cover just in case the most unfortunate thing happens to the individual who has the home loan. Uh, then the bank can recover the cost. However, if you have a term cover, the bank can recover its cost and whatever is left over can also come to the family. And a term cover is almost always going to be cheaper than uh, taking this, uh, you know, what they call the home protector or uh, the home uh, insurance. It's not a home insurance. It's like a home life uh, protector. So I would advise, please go for a term insurance cover. It'll be much cheaper and it won't reduce. So if anything unfortunate were to happen, there'll be something left over for the family as well. Right, uh, we've got Varun from New Delhi. He says, I purchased a flat of approximately 40 lakhs. Um, and he wants uh, uh, to understand about a good uh, property insurance plan for him. So there are, there are two kinds of uh, home insurances. And uh, you need to be very clear about which one you require. One protects the building, the structure from any floods, from any damage, from any fire, from any you know, malicious breakdown, etc. And the second protects the contents. Now, the contents are all your uh, television, elect you know, electrical goods, refrigerator, computers, uh, even jewelry up to a certain amount. So all of that comes under uh, household uh, goods protection and the home protection or the buildings protection is essentially for the, for the construction. So you need to first determine what you want to cover. And then there are lots of options. Most of the general insurance companies have a very good option for uh, home insurance. And I 
definitely advise you to take a home insurance because it's a very expensive part of your life and if something were to happen to it uh, it's just going to go away you know unless uh, the government does something and kind of pays you back in some way which is fairly unlikely right uh, well we've got a, a phone over we've got Man manpreet uh, uh, on the line go ahead manpreet hi i'm 32 year non smoker married and i and looking for two term insurance policy for 1 crore each for 27 years which policy can I buy being an NRI? Right. So uh, every term policy cannot be bought by non-residents, but uh, some can. So you need to declare uh, if uh, you are a non-resident. I believe uh, ICICI, Future Generali, and uh, one more are available, max, are available to NRIs. Uh, because otherwise, they, the first question they ask you is, are you a resident Indian? And other, if you're not, they would not offer uh, the particular plan to you. And uh, once you've uh, kind of declared that, then if you buy the term cover, you are covered. You would need to have a certain amount of income to get uh, two plans. And when you buy these two plans, kindly declare to each one of them that you're buying the other one. Because you're buying them almost simultaneously in a decisive way. Uh, actually, there's no particular reason why you should buy two. You could just go for a single plan of two crore rupees rather than one crore, e you know, two plans of one crore each. But if that makes you more comfortable, please go ahead with that. In terms of... Uh, uh, premiums given your age and unless something is uh, uh, medically different from normal as long as uh, you know you, 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 uh, the condition is uh, is is normal uh, I believe your cost should come to uh, for, for a one crore plan should come to about 13 14 thousand rupees you'll have lots of options out there uh, and uh, you you certainly must explore them and you will get a cover up to 30 years as well Right, uh, we've got Naresh from Katak um, and he says I paid five premiums uh, for my ICICI Prudential Life Stage uh, show policy. It started in the in 2009 and uh, he says I've paid uh, rupees 40,000 each year totaling to two lakhs. I'm not planning to invest any further. He says uh, since my policy document states the policy will be paid up after five years. I want to understand uh, should I stay invested or should I exit? I think you should certainly stay invested. Most of the unit link products since 2000 and before 2010 uh, had high costs. I must also clarify, after 2010, ULIPS have become really low cost products and very consumer friendly products. But that has also implied distribution margins coming down. And what that has meant is not many distributors are very comfortable distributing these products and hence the total volume of these products has come down. So please stay invested. Uh, now that you have incurred the initial expenses, from here onward, it's a very low cost product and uh, you should definitely think of exiting you could uh, if your policy demands you to make further payments you could convert it into, and you don't feel like making any further payments you could convert it into a paid up policy which would imply it will be a proportional policy in terms of proportional benefit so if it's a, a 10 year policy and you've paid for five years you'll get half the benefit that you were supposed to get uh, and uh, that will not be uh, a, a bad outcome but i think cancelling the policy will not be a good idea you would uh, have incurred the costs and you will not get the long-term benefits that you're supposed to get from such policies. Right, Yashish. Now, that's all the time that we have on this show. But uh, you can write to us at ask.policybazaar.com. You can tweet us at policybazaar underscore in. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.